We knew we were making an important film. We knew we were making an historic film. We had no idea it would be that powerful. When I started working on this film, and I would tell some people about it, or Molly and I would go pitch it to possible donors, um, we had instances where people would tell us, oh, Cesar Chavez the boxer. It struck us that, wow, there's a whole generation of people who actually don't know who Cesar Chavez really was and didn't know what he did. For a lot of us, you know, from my background, which is a privileged, you know, Irish, American, white, upper middle class background, you know, Cesar Chavez is another name for Sunset Boulevard, and that just is a real shame. Well, I, you were, you had to worry. It's the first time in this whole time you were worried. We wanted to make a film that was based on footage that hadn't been seen before. I started seeing this dramatic fast footage it became apparent to me that entire, an entire film could be built around that drama. Because so much has been written about him, we don't have the burden of history on our shoulders. So we get to focus on the, the real human experience. How many of you would trade places with them? How many of you will ask your children to become farm workers? That's what's at stake. We're shaping the film around the 88 fast, which of course is the pesticide issue, but the, the larger theme here is about spiritual commitment and moral authority. Mm -hmm. We're afraid in the progressive movement, we're afraid to talk about God and spirituality because we, we don't want to offend people of different faiths and we lost any moral authority that we once had. Molly and I thought we need to go there, not in an apologetic way or in a way advocating Christianity. I, I myself am no longer a Christian, but I recognize the capacity for a spiritual life to empower farm workers who never had power before. There was something sacred going on. We were on sacred ground with him. He was about the business of doing something deeply spiritual and powerful and extremely painful and dangerous. We were fortunate enough to get a grant from the Norman Lear Foundation. And with that grant, we were able to plan a pretty elaborate shoot. We wanted to create a dramatic visual effect for the first round of interviews. The whole purpose of Caesar's Fast was to let the world know about the pesticides and the kids that were dying. I had created uh, DVDs that were specific to each person I was interviewing. All that footage was shot 15 to 20 years ago. The people I was interviewing, I knew they weren't going to have a very good memory of that per se. Martin Sheen forgot that he was at the breaking of Caesar's fast. I showed him the footage, the footage of Caesar's son, Paul, and others carrying Caesar in. Caesar is sick and barely able to tolerate the heat and the noise from the mass. And finally, Caesar taking that piece of bread from Ethel Kennedy. Brothers and sisters, we present our very priceless treasure on this altar, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Caesar has broken his fast from the hand of Ethel Kennedy.
A few months into the planning of the shoot, a pregnant farm worker dies of heat exposure. We thought that was just not acceptable, not in our country. And certainly not after the work that Cesar Chavez did. The situation has not changed. The oppression has only been shifted to a new generation of workers. And uh, Caesar's example, I think, needs to continue to speak across the decades, precisely because this injustice has not been corrected. We have to learn how to be moral actors and then take those actions out into the political realm. Caesar was an example of that. And I think that's why we need to make this film now, because this is a reminder of what we can be.